So here we are, group stage of Sax Nations Cup. Brazil does not need that dash. Thank you very much. And uh, Brazil have been so good. They've accomplished so much as a country in team game tournaments over the years. We'll see if they can repeat that here in this one. There's eight teams in the main event. It's a condensed format compared to Nations Cup of the past. It also is not all team games. You have 1v1, 2v2s, 3v3s. It's a mix. We'll see how things pan out here. We got African clearing. And oh boy, we got fire for Brazil. Fire is right next to dark for Russia. <laughs> they are right on top of each other here. That's certainly going to be a talking point. So I'm going to start off introducing Russia's team. I'll just show the positions because it's so crazy on this map. So we got dark, obviously. Okay. Uh, and then down towards the south, we have Repard. Now, Repard is Vietnamese. And because of that sieve, which I think is a very nice choice, they will actually know the TC locations for all of Brazil, which will be a big deal. Uh, then you got Vinchester over on the very right side. And then you've got Antagonist in the north. So Antagonist and Vinchester are relatively close to each other. And then for Brazil, you've got Fire, obviously. He's kind of the odd man out. In the gray, you've got Stark. His name is Daddy Stark, which is something I probably shouldn't have said. Uh, and then you got Miguel out there. Miguel's in the green. Miguel playing as the Hindustanis. And then you've got Goku. So interesting, there's no Dogal here. I don't know if Dogal's unavailable right now. I'm really surprised to not see Dogal. Dogal would be the best Brazilian player, but maybe he'll come in later. Yes, but Goku is a really solid player as well. Stark is definitely a player who has done well for Brazil too. So I think Goku and Stark you maybe weren't expecting to see play. But those, I think Brazil have a really solid core of like five or six. They can interchangeably play. Ah, okay. Apparently, apparently uh, Dogal is on vacation. I did see some Instagram posts of Dogal and Fiage who are good friends. PH is kind of retired. He doesn't play anymore. So uh, Dogao is, is not available for this round. Well, it's double Elim. So if they lose here, they're still okay. But a bit of a shame. Way to just go live life and make memories and have good times, Dogao. What a loser. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm good friends with Dogao. So I can say that. All right. So, um... Well, right off the bat, I think Fire being Magyar's, he's got to do some damage here. Because he is kind of pinched between red and orange, and he's Magyar. So I'd say Fire needs to focus on making scouts. I'm really curious where he's going to go for wood. Because he's not really close to the outside, so maybe a lumber camp here will be the play. Kind of rough of a rough start for Fire, in all honesty. Definitely feels like... Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, he saved it. Okay. Definitely feels like this is going to be a tough game for him. Stark being on the side, though, I mean... The thing I'll say about Stark is I don't think he's that adaptive of a player because he's not that quick, but he can play a role really smooth. He's really solid. You always know what you're going to get with Stark. And with Saracens, I would expect maybe Archers here. And Goku is Mongols. And Goku may feel inclined to try a fast castle if he feels like he could have the time. Mongols, maybe Mangadai late game could be the play too. So you might want to boom first. That boar is not following. And Goku's got to sort that out. He's got lots of sheep though. He's still got the shorefish. And he almost lost this villager here bringing in this rhino, which explains what he was doing. But he didn't lose the vill. Someone says I'm friends with him. That's why I can say he's delusional. Yeah, that's how it goes. You can make fun of someone when you're friends with them, right? Or so I thought. <laughs> Otherwise, I have a lot of friends that shouldn't be friends anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I think I I'm thinking about this now. Dogal's not here today, right? Which I didn't know. You have a combination of 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, and 4v4. There's two 3v3s in the best of five. So think about Russia's perspective. You got Vinch, you got Dark, you probably have Antagonist. For Brazil, you're going to have Miguel. You're probably going to have, like, Fire and then maybe Goku. I think Russia should be the favorite if Dogal isn't here today. That's just my thinking. 
We'll see who goes scouts. We'll see who goes fast castle. We'll see who goes archers, of course. Stark is going to click up to Feudal Age now. Stark probably going to be going archers here. And there goes Vils to gold. And then we got Dark also on the way up with the Gurjaras. Only was able to find four sheep here, which is kind of unfortunate with the Gurjaras. Because you could get so many more, but you don't have a scout, right? Shout out to uh, Send It Sean with the new Prime sub. What's up, my friend? Thank you. Thanks for sending it. Manatee Lady, thank you for the two months. <laughs> Are you a big fan of manatees? Are you the size of a manatee? What? <laughs> Why did I say that? You're never going to resub again. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Hank Med, for the 31 months. <laughs> it's a real problem how I just have to say the things that I think. It's a real character flaw. <laughs> Not being able to hold my tongue when there's a mic in front of my face. Oof, it's a big problem. Apparently, you're not a big fan of manatees. And you're also not the size of a manatee. Okay, good to know. Thanks for clarifying. Expect the archers to come out from Stark. And everyone seems to be clicking up at pretty fast times. Miguel would maybe be the exception. And Miguel's got Vils on gold. So I think for Miguel, this is a fast castle attempt. The big thing for me there is that he's pretty close to Rapard. And Rapard will know where he is. Because Rapard's Vietnamese, remember? So everyone on Team Russia should know the positions of Brazil. A stable there for Goku. This will be Scouts. Antagonist probably going for Fast Castle as well here with the Huns. I think Fast Castle Cav Archers can be really good here. Spear Archer from Dark here to pressure Fire. We knew the action would be crazy here. I think it's acceptable if Fire just has like an okay game. What you don't want is you don't want Fire to be completely dead. This is going to be a tough position. You just need him to compete in what ways he can. The tower was 100% the right call. Got nice hits there on the archer. And fire will be fine as long as he pulls the villagers back to the wood line. Dark is really aggressive. But, I mean, fire... He's going to need to protect the backside of his eco, too. Remember, there's going to be cav archers on him at some point. Fire is going to be... He's going to have some real problems here. Now, who could pr have problems, though, could be Dark himself. Because Dark could be coming from the other side with archers. And then there's Miguel, clicks up to Castle Age already. Meanwhile, we have Vinch on the way to Castle Age. Oh, boy. So Vinch is on the way to Castle with Spanish. And Vinch has that stone walled in, so he will likely get to Conquistadors. That's an issue. Brazil need a nice little start, then, if that's the case. Here comes scouts from Goku. There's no defense here for Rapard. Rapard doesn't have anything prepped to deal with this. That will be at least one villager down. Could have been worse. And could still be worse for him as he's going to... Oh, he's slinging! Okay, so the, here are the rules for slinging in this tournament, okay? You can only send resources to someone that is an age below you or the same age as you. So he can sling Vinchester until Vinchester reaches castle. So he's offering no military support whatsoever. I'm really surprised at this, actually. And he can only sling Vinch and only sling Antagonist over the next, like, however many seconds until they're in Castle. Nice job from Stark. Stark pushes Dark off of gold, so now Dark's in a rough spot. Fire's still okay. But this is also what happens when you have two players go FC. Two players go Fast Castle means the other two players have problems. Repart, obviously, no army. Dark's the only one with army right now for Russia. Oh, God. And the castle... <laughs> the castle <laughs> from Vinchester is going to be on Goku's face. Guys, Goku is not going to make it to Castle Age. Goku might need to sling as well. He can't deny this. Vinchester brought Spearman as well. That is a perfect castle from Vinchester. Castle on the face is not going to make life easy here for poor Goku. He has the plan for life without this TC. This is going to get worse. Meanwhile, Miguel dropping TC number two. TC number three. He's going to boom. 
Meanwhile, the scouts and the archers from Stark and from Fire are still trying to combine. First cav archers are out now from Antagonist. Fire is going to get completely destroyed by this. So Fire is going to be... Dude, what a crazy game. This is going to be a 2v2. This might be a, like a 1v2. Like, basically, Russia have set up to win this game through Winchester and Antagonist. That's essentially it. And the tower defense is just not it. Against Conquistadors, they'll sit underneath the tower. I guess if you have two towers next to each other, maybe it's okay. This is horrible for Goku. This is also horrible for Fire. And then you're just wondering, well, where's Miguel? Well, Miguel wasn't really prepped to send a lot of army. He was ready to send some. And camels. And Goku is out of the game. Fire at least going to receive some support here from Miguel. The key, I think, ends up being Stark, possibly, because Stark will have lots of crossbows, which might be the most important thing against Conks and against Camels. But Goku is just playing, like, little ring around the rosy, trying to save himself at times, but he's about to lose his TC. So, Rapard sent some res, and now he's just going Castle H. And he's going to be completely fine, of course, because Vinchester has Conks around. And for Fire and for uh, Goku, they're going to be in Feudal Age for quite some time. Fire hasn't taken too many losses, but it's about to get so much worse. And oh, no. Oh, this is brutal. Disaster for Brazil. And think about, like, Stark opened archers and Fire opened scouts, and they only killed, like, one or two units for Dark. Like, Dark did relatively okay, considering... And the Castle Age units are just wrecking them here. New TC for Goku. I think the best play for Goku is to drop a market. Well, he has one. And I think just send resources to somebody else, maybe. Feels like it's the type of game this has become. Vinchester has been completely untouched. Yeah, Vinchester is the best player for Russia. And he's had maybe the best Civ for Nomad. The best starting position in the game. I guess he was never attacked. That's part of what makes it look really strong. I'm not seeing many positive signs here for Brazil, guys. There's really no other way to say it. I see a bunch of people showing up. Like, where's Dogal? Dogal's on vacation. So maybe... I, I hope for Brazil that they don't themselves don't start to think they need Dogal right now. But game one is looking rough. Yeah, it's a big problem. I agree. It's not ideal to have the Mongol player sling because you want the Mongols in the late game with Mangadai and, and whatnot. But when you're at 30 vils and you've been castle dropped and you're still in feudal, it's going to take too long. And I think at this stage of the game, you kind of have to hope that you can set up Miguel to win the game for you. But... Miguel doesn't have the units, so then I was thinking maybe Stark, but does Stark even have the units? Stark lost all of his archers. I don't even know. Like, Stark has nothing. He's got a, a TC in this corner. We've got banking... Uh, uh, sorry, coinage for Rapard. And so, again, you can sling people that are in the same age as you. So that now Stark is sending resources to Miguel. But I think Brazil are just out of ideas. I'm out of ideas for them. That's actually a good point, uh, PM. It's... What I was suggesting is wrong. Goku can't sling anyone in Castle Age. The only person Goku could sling would be Fire. But yeah, I think this is over. Like, this is just... It hasn't been close, and it's getting worse. And... Oh, 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 but... Fire is gonna kill quite a few villagers here on Repart, at least. So that's something. Rapard's going to lose those bills, and the TC gets denied. But it's still just this conch ball. Camels will shred conchs if they get in close. But the problem is you lose most of your camels before you even get close. I guess you could just use the TC, though. That's not bad. Oh, let's go. Okay, Goku. Goku kills two bills with scouts against the conch player. That's pretty sick. 
Dropped a couple more towers. Really running out of space here. And fire is still just staying in feudal age, adding scouts and adding towers. Well, Stark sending more resources to Miguel. And these conks that already have 15 kills now get 16 kills. I mean, it's just crazy, man. I think in hindsight, they really needed to pressure Vinchester, right? They needed to get damage on Vinch. The problem was they didn't know where Vinch was because they didn't have the Vietnamese bonus. And so, like, they had three players go Feudal Age Army, but none of them went to Vinch. They also didn't end up very close to Vinchester, in all fairness. There you go. That's something good for Miguel. Still 60 villagers, killing some of the Conquistadors finally. We'll kill a bunch more. That's not bad. Okay, good stuff. I still think there's big problems with the fact that Antagonist is going to be four TCs with full CA, though. And Fire's vill count's not getting any better. More villagers going down for Fire. He just doesn't know what to do. And what can you do? You need support, and there is none. There's not enough, anyways. Vinchester. He's not going to be too worried about Camels writing his eco. That's not going to be much of a problem. And the Cav Archers will just continue to be a problem for Fire. Fire is at 23 bills. Fire is out of the game. At least you're going to have Goku in the game. Goku is going to be up to Castle H. Credit to him. Okay, so agree or disagree with the statement, chat? Because I've seen two games on this now, and I'm, I'm forming some opinions, right? I think Vietnamese are close to a must draft for this map. I think you can use, like, in theory, actually really like Huns as well, because you have the horse. And it helps you get the, the sheep, but it also helps you find out where people are. I think if you don't have Huns and you don't have Vietnamese, I think you're doing something wrong. It feels really important to know where people are. Both games just came down to no, one team recognizing where all the other four were, and the other team didn't. And the team with the information used the information perfectly. I don't know. My feeling. You could make an argument you also want Mongols in there because Mongols have the like extra scouting vision. But it's like the extra scouting vision doesn't help until you make scouts because you don't start with a scout on this map. So here comes Dark. Dark is going full camel himself now. And he's receiving resources from Repart every now and then. And Miguel is just getting to a stage of the game where it was looking pretty solid for him. And now all the pressure comes over to his base. And again, you can't really raid easily with camels. They die to TCs pretty quickly. Spearmen even. Messy for Vinch, though. But really not looking good for Dogal. Uh, sorry, for Miguel. There's no Dogal here. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, here Vinch will get pushed away. But he's going to run away with those conks. And here Miguel still has problems. Fire update. 29 vills and 7 towers. That's the fire update. Goku update. Dropping a castle. Going to start to make Mangadai. That's a good unit to have. Miguel lost his camels here. The other camels that were chasing the conks got pulled back to the castle. That's going to be two castles now for Vinch to produce conks out of. And Antagonist is on the way to Imp. Brazil is 30 army behind. They're 120 villagers behind. This is over. And it's not looking good. Hasn't looked good for some time. And so Brazil, I think the favorites in terms of what their country has accomplished in the past. But they don't have their best player here today. And also, I think Russia's got a nice next generation that a lot of people underestimate. Antagonist is really good. Dark, really good. And Rapard is a really solid fourth as well. And Rapard has done everything he needs. He hasn't had to have the score lead this game. He's just set up his team perfectly. Gave Vinchester the little bit of a boost with the sling. He's just been playing full sling. Full boom, full sling this whole game. Even got coinage too. And there's no way Fire is going to be able to stop this castle. So that's going to be a castle on his face. And I had the GG's called.
So, knowing the Brazilian players, I know that they're big momentum guys. And I know that maybe they already would have looked at this without Dogal today. And they might already have their minds on the loser's bracket. But we'll see. I mean, it's just one game. We'll move into a 1v1 next. Where I imagine it's going to be Vinchester for Russia. It could be maybe Vinchester or Dark. But it's important to note that whoever plays the 1v1 cannot play the 3v3 later on. So if I'm Brazil, I think I want Miguel in that 3v3. So maybe you have like Fire play the 1v1? I think it's really tough. Dogao is also their best 1v1 player too, so. Maybe you mentioned it, but why is Dogao out? Dogao is on vacation. Dogao is on a trip. Uh, antagonist, 65 to 27 KD. But look at the economy differences here. Like, Fire didn't even hit 10K resources. Goku barely hit 14K. And then you had 27K brought in by Antagonist, 20K for Repart and Vinchester. And then Repart also sent, like... Does it not show it here? Am I missing it? I thought it should show the amount of resources. Oh, it's literally right on screen. Yeah, Repart also sent 5K resources over to, to the others to set them up. So really solid performance there. So, again, the expectation here. Fire's Chinese. He needs all of his vills to work right away. And he, he can't have any idle time. And then Dark gets Loom instantly. So Dark is going to send out vills right away to try and deny these boars. There's eight boars around. This is going to get messy. And the players also start with a horse. You also can't push deer So with, with the horse. So that could really slow down the Chinese. And oh man, Fire's going to go for it. That's actually sick. If Fire can get that boar, he might end up being okay. But can he get these other boars? This obviously comes at an expense for Dark as well. But Dark is going to take the one in the south. And he's going to just lame this one. So it dies out here. And he just wants to make Dark Age as brutal as possible for Fire. The Fire did send a Vill this way to try and do something about that. And he is actually getting some hits. If Fire could kill the Vill, he might not end up feeling too bad about this. Yeah. The idle time for Fire is expected up to 25 seconds. A normal Chinese start, that's expected. We have a pause now. Also, I think... It's possible this villager dies. Ha, 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 ha. Okay. It was close. Kind of an awkward time there for a pause. But think about this. Where is Fire supposed to get boars right now? Fire's got one boar. He can't take this boar. This boar was stolen. He doesn't see this boar. He's going to try and kill this vill, but now Dark is trying to block Fire's vill from getting to his vill. And then fire is blocking the vill, so his vill can attack it, and it's just not happening. So fire needs meat. He needs food. And oh, 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 fire, get the kill. Get the kill. Oh, he's going to get the kill. That's really well played from fire. Because you're already up uh, vills because you're Chinese. You're already going to have some problems here, but at least you have the vill count. I think what could save fire here is if he's able to find the boar up here. He has to look. There's no boar down here. Guys, he's about to run out of food underneath his TC. Oh, he's going this way. He, he's not going to be able to get this one. Like, Dark did such a good job at getting the boars that would be easy for fire and saving the other ones for later. And Gots kill the boars so easily. There we go. Fire found one. He's going to make a run for it. Does Dark notice that? No, Dark doesn't have that scouted either. Okay, Fire should be okay there. He's going to build the Lumber Camp. Man, it's just such a, a crazy map to pick Chinese on. Like, it just makes it so much more difficult. But obviously, if you weather the storm, they are an amazing sieve. This would be huge for Brazil. So Gal is on vacation. Dogao is not available today. So Fire and everyone else on Brazil is really going to have to step it up. And Fire didn't keep scouting this way. He didn't keep scouting this way. So he's not going to find another boar. He does see the villagers moving that way from Dark, though. So I think he's going to run out there now. 
I don't know if fire can go feudal age, guys. He needs one more boar. And here it is. He's going to drop a gate, maybe? I would drop a gate? Uh... Oh man, Fire's gonna use the Vill, and he's gonna use the horse, and there's also the boar. <laughs> oh, he drops a house? Okay. He's blocking the boar? The boar could die out here because the it's a goth boar. Fire wants this boar so bad. Fire, no! Don't let it go! No, that's your boar! He's not gonna get it. And also the boar will go underneath the TC as well. So Dark's gonna have six boars out of the eight boars. And fire is no food. This could be GG. I love the the way Dark played this. I really hate the Chinese choice. I just... Again, full credit to Dark. But I think it's just such a risky play to go for Chinese when you need to have such a smooth Dark Age with them. He's had a minute of idle TC time here, fire. He's now population capped because he didn't have a house. And Dark is feasting. And now, like... Goths are one of the best civs at really pushing some timings too, right? So maybe what Dark could do is just rush Feudal Age, go for lots of Spearmen, maybe some Militia. Oh man, don't tell me Fire can't even find the hunt. He doesn't even know about the hunt! No! His horse is just not in the right spot! I could have sworn I saw a, fa a building foundation there for a second on screen. So now he doesn't even know about the deer. And he's still looking for the deer. He does understand the map and that there should be deer out here. But, oh dear. Well, so he had a vill advantage. And that's disappeared because these vills are just running. Oh my god. How unlucky can you be, bro? Now he's missing these deer. Now he's going this way. Don't tell me he misses these as well. Oh my! <laughs> he misses these as well! <laughs> okay, he found these, but now he's like, well, I'm on the way to Feudal Age. I don't need him anymore. Like, guys, he misses these by two tiles. He misses this by one tile. Finally, he sees one and finally finds those. There we go. Oh my goodness. Meanwhile, Dark's going to be in Feudal Age 30 seconds faster. Dark's going to have more vills, actually. Or at least even. I'm trying to do the math. I think Dark will actually be up a vill just because of all the idle time from fire. And the Chinese do still have the cheaper techs and whatnot, but I'm not really sure how much that plays a role now. Again, it's just like, I knew before loading into this game that Dark would make it messy. I would even prefer a sieve like Mayans, because there at least your si your resources last longer, and you have the extra vill without with like food to produce things at the start. And Dark is going to be ready, and Dark's going to probably do what we saw a lot of, uh, maybe some spearman skirmisher. He is going to gold though, so he might go for archers as well, and he opens up with a skirmisher. I'll see if fire can recover here. Yeah, I, I agree that, like, Fire didn't have his horse in the right positions. It was very weird that Fire scouted this way with the horse when he was looking for the deer. So I think a lot of this, like, not finding the boars is kind of understandable because he was using his horse to do other things, like block the vills. Uh, and it a lot happens very quickly here. But the horse being around the outside instead of the back of his own base to find the deer definitely didn't help. And so the meta we tend to see on this map is a lot of, like, skirmisher openings. Like, skirmishers and spears and just smothering the opponent with lots of trash units. And we are actually going to have archers in the mix here from Dark. And it's just looking like Rush is going to go up 2-0 here, guys. Like, for Fire, it's not looking great right now, economically. And it's just, it's just not great. It's not it's just not smooth or efficient play at all, right? Like, walking back and forth to take gold... Opening archers when your opponent has skirms also feels a little awkward. Just not in love with Fire's position right now. And then, the double whammy is if Dark gets the win here, they can use Vinchester for the 3v3. Right? Because, like, you could have gone Vinch for the 1v1. And then, 
you know, you lose out in the 3v3, and then maybe Brazil here is like, well, whatever, they don't have Vinchester there. They get to save Vinchester. I think right now, Darks may be a little bit confused. Like, where is Fire's army? And F Fire's gonna try a counterattack, but Dark spots it with the horse! Look at the difference! The fact that he notices that is just so good. That would be Fire's way back into the game. You can tell Fire noticed he was spotted. And now Fire is just not going to go forward at all. He decides just to back away. I'd like to see Dark build some outposts around. Just like an outpost in the back. An outpost on either hill around your base. And you probably see a lot. At least with Town Watch. So I'm sure he's confused right now. Yeah, Dark's playing amazing. Is he going to click up? No way he's going to have the resources for Castle Age after this. Not only is it impressive that he can even get the resources to do it, but to me, it's a lot of confidence. Like, I feel like the, the best players are going to greet it out in these situations, not get fletching, and cut army numbers, right? And Dark clearly very confident in his situation. Horse still not being used at all by fire. Just to find certain things, right? And we got villagers going to stone here for dark. And that's probably for a castle, which could mean Huskarls, which is perfect against Feudal Age Army, which is all Fire has. Fire looking around. Fire will see the skirm, so he he knows that the archers will find it difficult to, to find any counter damage. He also has archers and skirms at home, because he's expecting some movement from dark. And little does he know, dark is on the way to the next stage. Three minutes of vital TC time from fire. Three minutes. And maybe like a minute and a half, two minutes of that was from the Dark Age shenanigans. But an extra minute here is not ideal. And there goes fire again. See, fire is hoping to find damage. So he's looking to see where he can find the damage. And he just doesn't know the stones being mined. He will maybe try and pull the units away. But Dark senses that. Dark's like, nope. I'm going to protect my stone. I'm going to protect my uh, my berries. And nothing else really matters here. I know it's like automated and you guys just click a button. But I like the fact that Twitch does that. And I still feel appreciated. Thank you guys for the, for the partner anniversary wishes. Hmm. Kind of yikes right now for fire. I mean, he maybe has a window because in theory, his army right now is better if he has the scouts here with the range units. Maybe there's a teensy little window. He'd have to clear this up and then, I don't know, deny a castle. But again, scout, archer, skirm. Good against just the couple skirms and archers that are out here for dark. Dark is going to lose a vill. That's not great. He's going to lose another vill. Here we go, fire. He doesn't end up losing another vill there. Or actually, I think I missed it, and he did. Has enough stone for the castle now, dark. Is going to drop it on the front. He's going to he's gonna drop it right on fire's TC, and fire's going to drop a tower. But I think if the castle's being built with more than 10 vills, normally the tower won't work. Normally the castle will go up anyways. Still, fire has a lot of army here. But he is going to lose some of it. Fire killed three villagers here. It's going to be six villagers he's killed. Seven villagers. Eight villagers. Hold on. Hold on. Will the castle go up? Nine villagers dead for dark. Oh, uh, ten villagers dead for dark. But the castle's up. And now where do you go if you're fire? Now you've got all of these villagers underneath the castle. You need your TC. To make it to Castle Age, that's probably going to go down. And then Dark can just reboom back into the game. Nice job from Fire, but 11 to 5 Eco KD, I think, is something that, that Dark will take every time. He's up in age. He can build more TCs. There's no counter for, for Huskarls now. And Russia goes up 2 0 here. The first game wasn't ideal. And then this game was just on point from Dark from the very start. And so I'm actually more critical of picking Chinese and playing with Chinese here than I am any of the gameplay aspects from Fire. Just because that's always going to happen. 
And it makes it even worse when you play up against the Goths. It is just such a tough map to play. And Chinese, can they don't want messy Dark Ages. Maybe Fire thought if he just had one more board, it would have been okay. And maybe he would have, but he didn't end up getting there. And so Dark gets the win on the board there in this best of five. Let's see what Brazil can cook up here, because so far without the big dog, it hasn't been looking good. We've got Daddy Stark here <laughs> in the teal on the flank. He's playing as the Bengalis. His pocket is Miguel, who's going to play Khmer pocket. And then uh, other flank is Goku playing as the Britons. Britons, great on a map where we've seen a lot of archers on the flank. That would be a huge, huge deal here for Brazil to get a snowball rolling with the Britons. Um, by the way, the boars are always outside your walls on this map, which is super annoying. And laming is allowed, so players are taking them really early because they don't want to get lamed. Uh, against Goku in the north, we have Vinch. Vinch is playing Italians. Interesting. He also has a lot of cows. Like an abnormal amount of cows. I think Vinchester didn't take a cow yet. I think he only took the farms. I don't know what he's saving those cows for. But that definitely seems to be the case. Uh, Pocket then is Repard. Repard is playing Poles. We saw that from France earlier today. I really like the idea of playing Poles. But I do think eventually the Poles become quite weak compared to stronger cab sieves, so you need to hit the timings. And then we have Dark playing as the Koreans. So of the sieves I've mentioned, the Koreans have the potential of going Castle Drop. They don't have to. They could still play Archers, but Castle Drop's, I think, a good thing to consider. And then I think that's the same with the Bengalis, actually. So I think maybe going Ratha against Warwagon isn't the most exciting matchup. So we might just see Stark go for, like, Monks and Archers or something. I would expect that Rapard is going to boom and that Miguel is also going to boom. I would guess that Miguel maybe goes for, like, the second and third TC and then adds a stable. It's really smooth with the Khmer because you don't need to, to rush barracks down, so you can kind of get away with skipping that for a little bit. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, Soxy, we are playing on the new update here. I find it kind of a shame that there's so many shorefish on this map, and I don't think it's ever really justifiable. Maybe that's different in the 2v2s, but I mean, my feeling is it's too risky to move out, and it's unlikely you're going to really, you know, take the risk at this level. Um... I think part of it too, and it's really annoying as a player, is you can't build on the ice. So the ice actually makes it worse because you can't build in the middle. You got to build like out here. But I guess it's just kind of how the map works. Initially, so our team was trying to train for this. And initially there was there was instances where there was a lot more shorefish, but it was very inconsistent. So some, ga some games one player would get it and other games you wouldn't. And then they fix the consistency, but I think they lessen the amount of shorefish, right? Like, you're never going to see a player say, this is worth it. But if it was like double the amount of shorefish and there was no ice, I think it would change the game. With three players out there, the last thing you want to do is put villagers out there and be exposed. So, a scout did go down for uh, Rapard. So, he'll have no scout. Remember, you start with the four farms here, so just another reason why I think Fast Castle makes a lot of sense. Wonder if we'll see Fast Castle Archers, potentially. Instead of Fast Castle Archer, you could even go for an economic Archer approach. Like, instead of 19 pop, what if you went 21 pop? Because by the time your opponent shows up with their own Archers, you're still probably going to have numbers in the defense. T90, could you try Cumin's 2TC on the Shorefish? Uh, I think Kumin's 2TC just in your base is way safer. And I we did see it in the qualifier. So that's a good, pretty good strategy. But I, again, you can't really fit a TC in a proper position to take advantage of the shorefish, right? Because the ice you cannot build on. So, uh, chat, type a 1 if you've seen some of these cool maps I've uploaded with the volcano and the earthquake and the tsunami. 
if you guys didn't, you should check that out because there's been some really cool maps and, and some pretty good games. So there's an Ice Age one, okay? And basically, um, the map starts and it's all ice and snow. And then at certain stages of the game, some of the ice melts. <laughs> it's really interesting. So like, imagine this, right? This is all snow. And then it's like, when you hit 10 minutes, a section of the map is no longer snow anymore. And then 10 more minutes and a section of it is no longer ice. And eventually it just all melts. Pretty sick. There's the archery range for Goku. Uh, Vinchester here to spot that. Vinchester going stable? Okay, Vinchester going scouts with the Italians was not something I had on my bingo card. Would have expected archers, but against the Britons, maybe he feels like that's a losing battle. I think it would be really cool if you could make it so units actually, like, you couldn't micro them on ice. <laughs> like, if you try and change direction when on ice, your units won't respond until two seconds after the command. And when I say really cool, I think it'd be fun to cast, but I would hate to play it. If your units would, like, slip around, you know? Ooh, we got a sling. We got a sling. Rapard is going to sling. Now, I think Rapard is also going to sling Vinch because the sling rules are you can only send resources to players that are in the same age as you or below you. So in two minutes, Rapard is no longer allowed to send dark resources. But again, Russia going to try and sling. We saw a lot of sling in the qualifiers too. As Stark is going fast castle, holy. And Stark is kind of going uh, Phosphorus style, or at least initially he doesn't mind the gold. But obviously he is going to add villagers here, so it's not really a Phosphorus build. Arza says, I thought Dark couldn't play in the 3v3. No, Dark can't play in the 2v2. It's a bit confusing, I know. So double range from Goku. Uh, meanwhile, Miguel is just going to boom. Stark should be able to defend himself. But let's, let, I'm curious to see how Rapard plays this. Like, Rapard can send resources over to his teammate one more time. Dark, that is. It doesn't look like he's actually going to do it again. It's kind of similar to the Nomad game where he slings and then he actually focuses on his own economy. TC's for Miguel. Kind of expected. What you want with Miguel is you want to go 3 TC, and then you boom, and then you add knights. Here come the Vils for Dark. But guys, if Stark builds it... If Dark builds this right on the walls, and Stark beats him to the castle timing, this could get interesting. Stark also sees this. Vinchester scouts are not here. Vinchester scouts are at Miguel's base. And, ooh, okay, there's just a castle there from Stark. Ooh, okay, there's Dark's castle. It'll probably go up, but this is kind of dicey. I like what Stark is doing here. Imagine if he can get one Ratha out. Ooh. He's bringing Vils! He was thinking about it. And Ratha should be in queue. It doesn't look like he had the wood fort right away as he goes for the monastery. All right. So, just Rapard booming up. Vinch is still... Wait, Vinch got through? Oh my god, what the... What happened here? What happened here? Vinchester's holding the gate open, got his scouts in. I'm not sure how that happened. But anyways, now Vinchester is trapped inside Miguel's base. No, the, the, the cow! No! <laughs> Don't, Goku, you gotta move the cow. I'll have to rewatch that. You'll have to remind me. But that gate is still open because the cow is there. And I don't think Goku realized that. In the end, they did kill Vinchester's scout, so it's probably worth it. And now we have Stark. He's gonna make monks, and then he's made a couple Rathas here as well. The thing is, I think War Wagons beat Rathas. But monks beat war wagons. Ooh, but oh, oh shoot. Miscalculation by Stark. And the wagon's able to run through. 
Wrath is headed over to Dark Space. Stark could have some problems, though. And that was a little awkward for Stark. It's already... He doesn't have Loom. It's already been kind of a rough start for Brazil. So they, they can't afford this. But he can convert the wagons. He should be okay. It definitely idles his eco more than he would want, though. He'll drop the house there. House could eventually get shot down by the castle. So, I mean, it's not like that's the end of it. But he will have monks. He should stabilize. Well, right now, I'm loving Goku's position because Goku's got crazy archer mass. And he'll be up to cast late soon. And I'm loving Miguel's position because Miguel's got a crazy economy. So, I think Brazil's in the better spot. Obviously, you look at Dark, and Dark has harassed Stark. <clears throat> but Stark, even though he hasn't had the best of games, is still okay. I, I think but he's not okay if he loses his monks. And that's why Vinchester's going to be around. But I think... A simplified approach from Stark. You just stay at home with your monks and you don't leave your walls is how you play this. This is fine. You just continue to try and get in, but you really just rely on def defense because you're not going to save you. Miguel's going to save you. And then Goku is going to dominate Vinchester on the other side. That's what you're hoping. It's just going to take some time for Goku to get there. I could just see, like, Vinchester's such a nerd, right? If he can get in with these Lycav, he could end Stark's day. And Stark is advancing forward. Stark, you cannot advance forward if Vinchester has Lycav, dude. I think he's misreading the situation a little bit. And Goku, look at this Archer Mask, dude. He's played super safe, too. You can tell he's a little bit of fear of what Vinchester might do. Vinchester will not be able to stop 30 Britain crossbows. Ooh, Monk's got two conversions. So more value than I was expecting to be possible if Vinchester was going to have Light Cav around. And, oh, the Wrath will also get in for Brazil. Huge. Nice job from Stark. He's going to try again to get conversions here. He gets another conversion. And I think this is more than worth it for Stark. Counterattack on Dark was amazing. Here as well, the monks haven't been killed. You can't see him, but there's a monk back there. So, Vinch has had to invest more and more into killing these monks. Finally gets the kills. But now is when Miguel could start to think about actually adding army, which he hasn't done in so long. He's actually getting coinage? He's getting coinage? To sling Goku? That's interesting. Okay. And you can sling someone who's an age below you or the same age as you. <clears throat> Oh, man. And Stark's still back here. These Wrath have killed four Vils. They've now switched to Archer mode to kill the rest of them. Russia, we're definitely hoping that Dark would have accomplished more. Like, Dark has not been able to get any type of real attack flowing here. And now Miguel is going to sling Goku to Imp. Wow. I actually love that. I also would love to just see Miguel make tons of knights. <laughs> like... If Miguel makes tons of knights, they're still fine. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I mean, you get the Britain player to imp with 30 plus army, and there's nothing in Castle Age that can really stop that. And Miguel doesn't have to sling forever. Miguel just needed to give him a little bit of a boost. And there is an overchop here into Miguel's base. Dark is debating on if he's going to go through here. Miguel didn't have Loom, and oh man, Brazil, this is so annoying. Now, like, Miguel's got so much of his eco idled. Let's keep in mind that Repart is, is full boom behind this. Repart's trying to catch up to Miguel. And I guess in the end, the Ratha can switch to melee mode and finish it off. So, a lot of harassment. And Dark also on the way to Imp. Ooh, wow. What? Ah, because Repart slung him. Okay, Repart slung him again. Interesting. Well, there was a lot of slinging in the qualifier. And if they were going to change the rules in any way, they would have probably done it after the qualifier. They seem to be pretty happy with the rule set. Oh, man. Goku. Like, Goku has just been chilling all game. He's barely moved out. He's not had the toughest game, but he's going to have to execute here. Because Stark could go down to Dark. 
which sounds pretty weird to say. Stark is starting to go down to dark. And here we go. This gets interesting. If Miguel had gone full knights instead of slinging, I think Dar Stark would be in a better spot. But if Miguel wouldn't have slung, then Goku wouldn't be an imp. And then Vinchester would be in a better spot. Like, Vinchester is is just in an awful position here. Vinchester cannot stop this. So Vinchester might die. Stark might die. Stark and Vinchester have to hold on. And I guess the difference is that you have Miguel actually making tons of army, and then Repart is not. Repart is still sending everything to Dark. I don't know if the sling is worth it here. And I love this castle. Like, th this is what you need. You don't need a rinky-dink defensive... Casual castle. You need, like, a forward in-your-face castle with the Britons. And look at the range of these crossbows. Ten range! You're gonna scorpion? Ten range? That's not happening, bro. Oh, almost happened. <laughs> there we go. Now, it's double castle here from Dark, and War Wagons are really tanky. And War Wagons can be good against archers. They can be good against knights. They can be good against everything that's out here. But there's just so much knight potential for Miguel. He's spamming so much army. And nice job from Stark, actually, to still be a menace and still be a force. That way, Dark can't pressure him all the time. Repart is fully walled. But Vinchester, guys, I, I think he needs to run. Like, I think he will just be defeated here. Like, I, don't know, I don't know what to suggest. He is starting to run with some of his vills. I think the rest of the knights from Miguel have to come over to save Stark's base because he could be trapped down soon. But yeah, say goodbye to the TCs in Vinchester's base. And here he comes now. He doesn't really have a lot of resources to add more yet, but he's going to do what he can. TC in the middle for Rapard, kind of getting delayed. Castle down for Stark, and Stark in a whole world of hurt. What a crazy game. Vinchester is fully evacuating. <laughs> he is evacuating his base. Get out. Run. Run away. And so the problem is twofold for Russia because they already had Rapard with zero army and slinging, but now they have Vinchester with zero army and running. So it's like three players making army against one. It is just dark in the game pretty much. And I don't know if that's enough. Dark's wagons are being converted here. There's still some leftover Ratha from Stark. These villagers out here are going to be found eventually. We actually have knights from Miguel into Dark's base. Dark is building a castle next to his starting TC to just keep himself alive. I'm guessing soon Miguel will try and swoop in to take out these trebs. And if those trebs are down, Stark will actually be okay. Also, still no uh, Arbalest for Goku. He has 53 vills. I mean, he should be able to afford it, but does he need it right now? Probably not. He'll get it eventually. More wagons diving in. I love the fact that Stark has made so many mugs! Stark says, give me your wagons! Thanks for the imp upgrades, bro! <laughs> That's crazy. Still in Castle Age, but now he's got Imperial Age wagons with his Ratha, and then more monks to get conversions, too. And that's... That's that's all he needs. He just needs to survive. He doesn't want to lose any more ground before Miguel shows up to help him. Miguel's on the way to Imp. Goku and Miguel could just start taking out TCs here. But I think eventually, Miguel will send all of his knights here. Again, Vinch, no army. No real way of supporting. And Rapard can't send resources to Dark anymore because Dark is an Imp. Vinch is losing his reboom now. 60 army for Goku. Crazy army count. Still has some army around here, obviously. Still has the big crossbow mass here. And I think Brazil are about to get one on the board, guys. And it will go to 2v2 next. This is assuming they can kill off Dark. Dark is still in a really strong position on his own, and he is a really tanky unit in the war wagon. I just, it seems a little hesitant from Brazil. Oh, God. Uh. 
Okay. <laughs> it just seems a little hesitant. Like, this knight army and these crossbows, they should be combining here to take out TCs, right? And all of this should just be dying. I think if that happens, it's it's surely game over. And if, if that happened, then maybe they could come help Stark. The Dark is telling his team, guys, I know you're dead, but I'm I'm killing Stark right now. And then this is where they feel the, the pain that ends the game, probably. Rapart is starting to make knights, but he's only in Castle Age. And Castle Age knights can't deal with this many Arbalest. And then Cavalier as well from Miguel, so. I've really enjoyed the games on this map. It's interesting. Like, we've seen different things. We've seen some teams sling. We've seen some teams go unique units. We've seen some teams go archers. It's been a nice mix. Perfect job from Goku. He has Vinchester completely surrounded here. Vinchester's getting slaughtered. And there's no way Vinchester was ever going to play a role ever since he lost his base. Dark still pushing further and further into Stark's base. But Stark is just waiting for support to come in. It'll come in eventually. But for now, they're just massacring everything they see from Rapard, Vinchester, and Dark outside their walls. Miguel's going elite battle elephant. Also has Tusk Sword, so he's got 12 plus 7 attack right now. Soon to be more. And that will surely end this one. Yeah, the wagons are not going to be strong enough against that. Plus, you have the monks in there from Stark, too. To heal up. Or to get conversions. There we go. Boom. 14 plus 7 attack. 320 HP. You think the wagons are chonky? Uh-uh. Elephants have something to say about that. And they still have not found a real answer to this. Miguel's army isn't even engaging. It's just attacking the stable. And still, they're going to win that fight. And I think all the trebs for Dark will go down. They'll lose the position. And the elephants will just keep coming. And there's a forward castle from Miguel. Seems like Russia really badly want the sweep here. Like they want the 3-0. But it's not going to happen, man. And th this was good from Brazil. I mean, it was really interesting adaptive play from them. I think... I, I don't think it was the initial plan for Miguel to send any resources to Goku. But they did that knowing that Goku would be the key to take Vinch out. Like, And then once Vinch was out, it was essentially just one player left for Russia. That was Dark. Stark did a great job. Stark had one of those games where he's bottom score, but he actually had to work the hardest. So my salutes go out to him. That was a really tough scenario for him. And then Miguel, of course, backed him up there perfectly. It was creative, but maybe a little too creative from Russia. They've proven... That they can they can like really play standard with these guys. It'll be two v two up next, and maybe Brazil can tie it up. I think the next map definitely suits the Brazilian skill sets too. Uh, arguably a little bit more than Russia, so we'll see. Uh, here's the res collected. Miguel with the dream game there, nice bounce back performance. He'll probably be in the two v two, forty eight k res collected. Uh, I think the big one again was KD. Stark did get 15 conversions, which isn't shown here. Goku, 72 kills, 9 deaths. That was crazy. Vinchester only lost units. Repart only lost units. Dark did an okay job, but he never killed off Stark fully. Okay, so first thing we have to look for is the laming. It is to be expected here, all right? I would be shocked if we don't see it, especially from Russia. Russians, these guys, they'll know the map, and they've got a very lamey style. Quick look at the map. We don't see any boars immediately on the front. There is this boar, which Miguel might think about bringing in early. There is this boar, which you can see Antagonist already going to bring in early. So I know that, like, Russia is very similar to France in terms of their play style. And they like their forward players to be very aggressive with early lames. I think in all their training and, and their qualification as well, actually. They qualified against Taiwan. I didn't actually watch the games, but I know Taiwan liked their lames as well uh, because they lamed Daniel to death when we played them. So um, always find the spawns on the front position are always a talking point too. Like the golds are way better for Russia. 
these golds are going to be tough for Goku, but ultimately what he's going to want is he's going to want a wall this way uh, in front of all that, and then his gold should be fine. So Goku on the front, Mayans, Miguel on the back, Persians. Miguel is so good in safe pocket position with Persians, man. I bet you if you go back and look at Miguel's drafts, both team games and 1v1s, for the last five years he's probably picked persians almost every single time i'm not even exaggerating on that because i just continually remember picking persians and it's it's the best i think it's it's one of the best pocket civilizations for this i'd say like persians georgians but no i think persians are actually number one for this position now it is a 2v2 so it's a bit different than say 3v3 or 4v4 japanese however I remember a game from Italy in the qualifiers where they used Japanese on the back, but there were two people on the front, and the two people on the front were um, were slung eventually, right? So the Japanese fishing ships would bring in all this food, and you'd sling the forward players. Here, there's only one forward player. I don't think slinging is, is possible. I just essentially think that Vinchester has picked a sieve that isn't good with knights long term but it's on a map where it won't go long term if this goes imp persians have the way better knights a little bit of annoyance here from goku i see a couple people saying that goku is gooky goku is a pro who's been around 10 plus years uh is it's accomplished a lot in his career i think he's just been overshadowed by a lot of other brazilians gooky is an up-and-coming player from mexico so they're not the same I could see why that's confusing, though, because a lot of people probably don't know of Goku. But, like, again, Goku's been around since the early, like, 2010s and has always been super solid, both for Brazil and he also played more 1v1s in the past, but hasn't played too much now. Small detail here. I think that Antagonist believes this is fully walled. So it is, like, walled off here with the wood. But there is actually a gap here, which could be kind of a talking point, so. Also, I kind of hate the lumber camp for Goku, in all honesty. He will chop through that wood pretty quickly, but he's Mayans. He can sort it out. Nice teamwork here from Miguel. Miguel's actually been pushing in the deer for Goku. That's huge, so Goku can have a competitive uptime. Mayans have the extra vill. Their res lasts lo longer, but Dravidians have the power spikes. Oh, also... Am I just crazy, or is that mining camp horrible? I think you want the corner corner of the mining camp to hit the gold tile there. But maybe you can't do that. I don't know. The Dravidians get the extra wooden feudal age, which is a free archer range and a free house, essentially. So you could just get the numbers out a little bit faster. Yeah, maybe he just felt he had to place it. Would have maybe preferred to take this gold, and then you build your buildings from this house to the wood line. We'll see. Someone says, where is Dogao? I think Dogao is on vacation. So Dogao is not here for this round. This is double elimination. So if a team goes down here, they will still go to the loser's bracket. But I would say that Dogao's presence has been sorely missed today. He probably would have helped them in game one. And then they would have played the 1v1 as well. Giving them a better shot there. But when it comes to the team games, that's where I think Brazil are favored. Obviously helps still if you have Dogal there. But I feel like because there's 1v1s incorporated, Russia became bigger, uh, a more dangerous team here. So a bigger threat. Let's see. Going to be a very nice build here from Goku. That's crazy. So he gets the range up. There it is. He probably won't be able to get the second range up right away. And then we'll see Antagonist be up in 10 seconds. What he will be able to do with his timing. Expect Miguel to drop a stable. And I love Miguel's thinking here. He's actually going to build the stable really close. I hope he doesn't build it here though. Because there might be a gap and a scout might get trapped here. Please Miguel, don't do that. Okay, that's fine. Yo, Helsing, thank you, man. I haven't done Loey the Legends in a while. I feel bad for the people who like the log videos, but hopefully be getting back to doing more at some point. Yeah, so that's open. 
And Miguel notices that's open, but do you also want to go in there? You could get trapped. Range number one and range number two here for Antagonist. And then we have two ranges here from Goku. Goku has the first archer a little bit faster, though. That's not what I would have expected. I would have expect, expected the Dravidian player to be the faster one to the ranges and the archers. And Mayan walls are cheaper. Mayan uh, res last longer. Mayan archers are cheaper. This is really good for the Mayans. Ooh, the berries, though. So eventually you need to farm for food income. And the berries are super far forward here. Holy. Same for antagonists, but still. They're not going to take food for some time. Winchester fishing ships on the back. Same for Miguel. Miguel's going double dock as well. We may eventually see Miguel go over to... Um, the gold as well to make more than one fire, but you can only afford one fire ship without mining gold. Vinchester's adding scouts. Double stable coming out for him. And he also has walled up just in case, which is interesting. And here goes scouts. And they will move along. Vinchester's going to end up seeing this. Noticing Antagonist has gotten housed. But he finds Goku... And he kills an archer there, even though he had less numbers. It's a nice pick off there from Miguel, though. Uh, micro is good enough there from Vinchester as the archer micro continues. So Brazil's got the superior eco. They've got more army right now, and they're playing super solid. They might send us to a game five if they can continue this. I think the next step would be upgrades. We see upgrades coming in for Vinch. He's going to have forging now and armor, actually. That's way faster than Miguel. Miguel's just adding his second stable now, too. So maybe Vinch could do it with his numbers. Vinch does have Japanese fishing ships. Now, what you don't want to do is overextend here if you're Brazil. If you dive too deep, you can't reinforce with the next group of archers, which is what you're going to want. So they seem to be just backing away now. Also, they will have clicked the scouts from Vinch probably to check for upgrades. And they should know that Vinch has armor and that Vinch has forging now. These six archers are so important for Russia to kill. But Miguel is just covering this so nicely. And just escorting them back home. Vinch pulling back towards the archers. Here comes Goku with more archers. Vinch is going to try and dive deep, maybe expecting that the other archers are going to come in. The archers are here now, though, so I feel like this is pretty acceptable for Brazil. Miguel did lose some scouts there, of course, but they just wanted Goku to get out of town. And there will be uh, the occasional fire galley looping in, but I think they'll just trade one for one there, so... Shot it. Babish. Love how Goku... Like, this... I know a lot of you guys don't know Goku, but this is something he's done for as long as I've known him, man. The Brazilians are actually really good with, like, army, house wall. Army, house wall. They've always been known for house walling a lot, and it's really smart in team games, so you have extra layers of protection. No blacksmith upgrades for Miguel, but no bloodlines for Vinchester. That extra HP is so nice. And there are a few more scouts for Vinch. Look at the micro from Goku. He's, he's done a great job this game. A really good go a job this game. Look at Miguel as well, just dodging on the front. They're trying to get like back to their base so they can get reinforcements in. And they're, they've been kind of cut off at times, but here comes the engagement. It's going to be Archer v. Archer, and then the scouts are going to be the difference makers. No armor for Miguel, but Miguel still has enough, and Brazil get the clear up. In the end... A very good fight for Brazil. The archers kind of reset, but Goku's got more. And the the eco situation for Miguel is either on par with or slightly above what Vinchester's working with. And now Vinchester loses a scout as well, and you can tell maybe Russia starting to let the, the worry creep in a little bit. Vinch still no bloodlines either. So I think he believes he has bloodlines right now, and now armor's in for Miguel! And Vinch has to run! But Antagonist is completely caught off. And this is an amazing fight. And this could lead to the GG call as well. I mean, not too far behind this is the berries, is the gold, and everything here for Antagonist. He cannot lose the front of his base. <coughs> Excuse me.
excuse me. It's also really awkward too, right? Because he's trying to produce from this archery range right now. And the Brazilians are just going to camp it. So, you would think that maybe a player would stop producing from this then, but you really don't have the time to think about that because you're just control grouping things. If anything, he's going to put the archers inside the range. And yeah, now you're just basically like, well, come out, come out. Wherever, wherever you are, you have to pop out at some point, and then it's a free kill. I love the patience from Brazil to actually... Well, now we have Miguel diving. But I like the patience from Brazil to just sit on the range. When you have the lead, you want to keep the lead, right? And Miguel is actually going to be going in with a bunch of fire ships to go kill the fish. I don't think Vinch is prepared with all the uh, fire ships that are coming that way. I think the next thing you talk about would be Castle Age timings, and Goku has had a stellar performance. This is the decade plus of experience playing this game from Goku. He doesn't play 1v1 events much. He's not he's near as active as he was back when I started back in like 2013, 2014, and saw him ripping it up. But he's a beast, dude. He's a beast. And Dogal is on the beach with V Age right now. Drinking some beers, screaming for Brazil, and just so happy, I'm sure, to see that Brazil is about to take this to the fifth game without him. I would love that to be the case, by the way. Dogal, if that's the case, shoot me a message. And yeah, I mean, we're definitely going to a fifth game. Has to be a fifth game from here. There's no way, like, Miguel and Goku have just left this, have played this so perfectly. There's no world where I can imagine it being anything different. Goku will be on crossbow in a minute. Miguel will be on knights in 90 seconds. The fires are going to disrupt Vinch. Now, Vinch is like tanky fishing ship, so he should be okay. But he still loses everything, and he's still going to lose the fish. And they're still going to probably lose the fights because Goku's just been a maniac. And Miguel's been in front every time he needs it. Maybe Miguel's not here right now? Panic? Question mark? Nah, Goku's fine. This is actually good enough. Just pulling these scouts away is, is good enough. Vinch clearly is looking on water right now. And not able to pay attention to that. And now the upgrades are going to come in. I mean, Antagonist has clicked up. So there is that. But he doesn't have the Archer count. And he's not going to have the upgrades. And this is going to be painful either on gold or on wood for him. And then Miguel, he might just focus on, on fish, honestly. Like, we might see the War Galley upgrade so he can just kill all the fish. He's redocked constantly. And then he'll have knights as well. This has not been the greatest of games for Russia. I mean, the draft was kind of weird to me. The Japanese in the back didn't feel like the... Best choice ever, but I think what they sacrificed on their draft was Persian so they could get Spanish for Nomad, game one. That's how you have to look at it sometimes. It's all about priority, right? The scouts from Miguel make it through. I don't think Japanese are a bad pick. I just think that Miguel and Goku made this look very easy. Antagonist has to tower. Even that doesn't fully protect his golds. And now the War Galley upgrade is in for Miguel. So he'll, again, just continue to pressure the fish here. But Goku, um, no stone right now. So he can't drop a second TC. Normally, this is all about archer numbers. This is just textbook, guys. Full walls across the front, so there's no surprises. Crazy crossbow numbers. And they're going to shift their focus to the hill. I think when the job is done here and you force the tower, it makes perfect sense. Similar to what we talked about earlier with pressuring the range. Take out their production. Or just straight up camp their production. And now, Red had to come this way to try and save his ranges. And he doesn't have ballistics. So he's not going to win the crossbow fight. Here comes Bidax for Goku. That's an upgrade he could have used a while ago. Uh, ballistics. Actually, still five seconds away from Goku. But yeah, Red just falling apart. He's going to be down to, well, two ranges in a second. And then Vinch is trying to stay alive on water. 
but also needs to save them on land. I think this has reached a point where even if Vinch kills all of Miguel's fish, it still might be over. Like, Obviously, that does a lot of damage to Miguel. And that's not going to happen, by the way. Miguel's going to get some big boobs! Boom! <laughs> that was perfect! Oh, man! That, that was just so sick! But, like, even if it happened, like, they should have such a good position here. I guess they are a little bit out of position. Vinchester, uh... Or, or, I guess Miguel is maybe a little bit out of position, but nah, it's fine. They still got so many knights. These are Persian knights as well. And again, they're just patiently just gonna camp the range. Just go ahead. Pop out with those two crossbows. I dare you. You're just gonna lose them. Random demos from Vinch trying to stay alive. But, uh, it's looking bad. So 3v3 Arabia for game number five, opening round in this group. Let's go. I want to say Brazil is like, that's the map that they're the best on. Like this is also really close to being that archer scout meta of Arabia. It's very different. Could be advantage Brazil there. Though maybe that's just letting the momentum talk. Momentum's certainly going to be with Brazil. You'll have Dark back in for Russia. Vinchester, so good on Arabia. Certainly can't count them out, but... And Russia continue to fight here, guys, but they just don't have it. Still pressure there for Miguel. And, uh, th I mean, these villagers are still so exposed. The gold's still such an issue. And the GG's called. Dang! I mean, it's crazy how a couple games changes things, right? Because... It, it, game number one, game number two... There's just a lot of, oh, there's no Dogal. You know, there's a lot of depression on the Brazilian side. But now everyone's like, well, we they can do this thing, including myself. Really great performance from Miguel and Goku. I think um, overall, I, I mean, they just played a perfect game. <laughs> I, I can't think of anything to say beyond a perfect game. There were no mistakes from Goku. There were no mistakes from Miguel. It was perfect Age of Empires. And then for Russia, they were just a little bit off the pace. They were just a little bit behind. Like, if this was a 100-meter sprint, Brazil was Usain Bolt, and Russia was the guy that was second place that everyone forgets his name <laughs> because of how fast Usain Bolt was. So um, maybe a weird comparison there, but uh, I felt like it genuinely was that clean from Brazil. There's the KD for Goku. Miguel, you really want to look to the economy. 22,000 res collected. And he did a great job being there for Goku. Because remember, early feudal, Vinchester had upgrades. Miguel didn't. And there were a couple instances where Goku could have lost his archers if Miguel wasn't there. So Miguel had the perfect support play there, in my opinion. All right, game five. Here we are. Let's, let's break it down. I mean, I do think Russia has the superior civilizations but it really comes down to how brazil can use the timings we've got vinchester as the pocket for russia playing as the franks we've got dark mayans flank on the right side and then you have wide chinese flank on the left so chinese and mayans they start with a little less food than other civs chinese a lot less food than other civs but they get the extra vils cheap archers for mayans cheap walls for mayans really solid Chinese, it's cheap techs, great economy. But Chinese will struggle in early feudal potentially against the Malay. Malay advanced faster to feudal age. So for fire, it's going to be about the numbers. It's going to be about the timings. Maybe getting the archers out faster. Maybe getting the upgrades a little faster. He's supported by Miguel, who's the pocket playing as the Slavs. And then we have the uh, Ethiopians here for Goku. That's the firing speed. So... Malay, the timings, Ethiopians, the firing speed. That's essentially how you break this down and how you have to look at it. And Dark is going to try and lame Goku here. This is crazy. No hesitation. And Goku's probably can't believe it. And game five, I mean, this should be a dead eagle. Well, Goku just didn't get in front. You got to attack the eagle. The eagle is slower than you, Goku. I'm really surprised. He still could be fine. And, oh, he is still fine. Okay, so he ends up blocking this. That's the second time. Please remind me to investigate that, chat. 
please say something to me. I need to investigate that because that's the second time this series or today where it looked like the boar was still within range of the scout and it stopped. I think there's either a map issue or a game issue I need to investigate. But um, nice job from Goku to stop that. He does lose the two sheep though. And they are, uh, those pigs, excuse me, are actually just headed to Vinch. So Goku can't find them again. But I gotta see, actually, we kind of have time. Let's actually just look now. So it should only, the boar should only stop chasing if it loses vision on the eagle. Okay, it lost vision. It lost vision. That's fine. It lost vision for like a half a second. The instance in the in the uh earlier in the day, it wasn't like that. So Okay, we're at live time now. So I'm not gonna compare Franks and Slavs too much. I think they're both beastly pocket sieves. I'd expect scouts from both of these players. And it should be pretty simple stuff. But I think gold positions for the flanks are a big talking point. Like, Dark's gold position could be a real big problem if he doesn't build out in front of that, which I'm sure he will. Same thing for Goku here. I think it's a bit easier for Dark because he has this wood line, so you can kind of use that as a natural wall in front of your gold. Fire's got a dream of a gold. And then really nice base for wide as well. I could foresee wide getting some pretty nice walls up, so... <clears throat> it's a bit risky, but wouldn't have minded to see maybe like a laming attempt against the Chinese, but Fire's not really that type of player. He's going to rely on his builds. No, he's behind the Chinese in terms of vills and just try and get the timings right. But game five, winning team moves into the winner's game uh, in their uh, in their bracket. And losing team goes into a do or die against another losing team from the other side of the bracket. So there's only eight teams in the main event of this tournament. There were more teams in the qualifier, but a, mu a, a more small, like condensed version of, say, like Nations Cup of the past. A little bit of debate on that, you know, but sponsors wishes. And I think also the timeline was rather short, so I had to work with what they could. So Miguel's on the way up. <clears throat> Vinch is going to be on the way up. Everybody's on the way up here. Except for uh, Fire, but Fire advances faster, so this is a bit calculated. And part of the build. So Fire is going to be up a little bit faster here. But Chinese are really tough to stop. <laughs> and it was interesting, too. Like, Chinese and Mayans being some of the early picks there for Russia... And they didn't use Chinese or Mayans in game four. It's almost like they wanted to save that. So they did maybe cut some corners a little bit, go for some awkward civilizations like Japanese Dravidians game four, counting on this game five. Not much more else, not much more to say at this point. We just kind of have to wait to see how these players move out. Now, if it was Miguel and Dogal. Miguel and Dogal's coordination are just insane for Brazil. I've seen it time and time again where their timings moving forward with archers and with scouts together. It just seems to fit so perfectly every time. Thing is, they don't play with fire that frequently, right? They don't play with Goku as frequently. It's really like Miguel and Dogal have never not been on a team together, whether they be for country or for clan. Actually, there is one... I, I can think of an instance nine years ago where they weren't on the same team, so I'm incorrect. But anyways, um, <laughs> we, we could talk about that another time. It's kind of funny. I think Dogal was... Uh, I think Dogal teamed with Vietnam once. Anyone remember that? Or was that Stark? It was definitely like... One of the Brazilians was on a Vietnam team. They were on Vietnam Legends. Maybe it was Stark. Communication ended up being an issue there. <laughs> nice double there from Vinchester and wide. They take fire completely off of gold there for a moment. Nice little bit of coordination there. And there's the double range here from Dark. Ah, Dogal was on... Dogal was teamed with SY at one point. Okay, so both of them. Yeah. 
You guys know your stuff. Man, I don't, like, love the fact that Fire's ranges are split up from each other in a way where he can't easily advance forward. It, it, it's... Maybe I'm being particular, but, like, I feel like that's an important thing, to be able to have your ranges together so you could hop forward. How on earth is Fire supposed to do that here? He could defend himself and pull his army back, but for Feudal Age, I don't think he'll advance forward at all. Maybe, though, that's intentional because we may see Miguel, as he's just worrying about getting his walls down, Miguel might team with Goku. And if he coordinates with Goku, then maybe Fire is going to be on his own and needs to defend from two. Which is certainly the case right now, because here comes Vinchester with wide. Russia moving out first. You oftentimes see a lot of patience. You'll see players waiting for their upgrades, waiting for their numbers. I think right there, Dark just pointed out that there wasn't a flag on that range. So Dark might be pointing out now, it might be concerned Vinch is going to get hit. Communicating that to Vinch. Vinch is not going to get hit. Fire is going to get hit. And Fire again, getting hit. And Fire is going to get Fletching now, but he does lose a Vill. And... This is the conversation we had earlier, right? You, you want the Malay player to use the timings against the Chinese. Still waiting for Miguel to come out. Miguel is here now. So it's been two instances where fire gets pulled off of gold. Not the end of the world, but not ideal either. But Brazil in a position to chase down these archers here. And killing off the archers is fire. Very well played. If they can kill these archers, that's a good start. Yeah, all those archers should die. Beautiful micro from fire. And yeah, Miguel will kill the rest. That's really good for Brazil. You'll you'll take that trade. Losing a Vill in, in exchange for four archers, you'll take that. Especially when you're Malay. Malay have a ch tendency to be able to recover pretty nicely. All right, so Dark moving forward. Dark will see Miguel's scouts. Oh, Miguel notices that and backs away. And now... Goku's here. Vinchester scouts grouping up, getting armor now. He's going to head over this way. Fire just snagging Vidax. A lot of pressure on Fire here to start the game. I have a feeling there's going to be more pressure on him at some point. But now the pressure's on Goku and Goku's reinforcements get caught out by Vinch. They didn't really know where Vinchester was. Ooh. Okay, well that archer will still probably die. Doink. Goku's turn to run away. And I, I also haven't seen a lot of the army from Miguel. Like, I'm seeing three scouts at a time. And Vinch was able to group up everything. And they're trying to find this army now. They may not choose to chase that army, though. They may just choose to break in and kill Goku. And Goku's army is just running away, hiding. And he'll want to regroup with the army that's in his base. Here's the army. Miguel getting armor. He's been much later to the scout upgrades when compared to Vinchester this series. But in the previous game, it didn't matter. Ooh, archers from fire. Oh, this is big. This is big. Where are the archers? Okay, the archers from wide are at home. Wide can, in theory, go save him. But Vinchester needs to call for help, and wide needs to go support right now. You can't have your knight player getting hit, and here go the archers. Russia looping around. Goku needs some support from Miguel. He's going to get bloodlines. He has armor already. Vinchester with a couple house walls here. Beautiful defense here from Vinch. He does lose one. He does lose two vills because there's a fight happening over here. Bloodlines had just hit for Brazil. And Vinchester's going to lose everything. The question is how much does Goku lose? Honestly, really good micro from Dark here. Because look at all the blue archers. Like, Dark lost his archers too, but he killed a lot from Goku. And now, look at the bodies from Fire as well. And Wide kills one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven, eight, nine archers from Fire. And putting archer, the archer numbers for Goku and for Fire much lower than what they want right now. Vinch is on the way to Castle Age. You have Wide on the way to Castle Age. But we will have Fire... And we will have Goku clicking up. Miguel will be up soon behind them. Miguel also has scouts. 
And if these scouts could find these archers, they could kill these archers with support. But Chinese Mayans, like the civilizations that need to play safe, they've been able to have a pretty safe game here for Russia. Here we go, though. The scouts jump. And the archers are coming from behind for Goku. Goku needs to fire here. He is going to do so. This is a really nice timing on this attack. Really nice to, to take down the Mayan player. But I think Goku's going to get home and wait for his upgrades if he sees Vinchester's in Castle Age. You don't want this army to be caught out by Vinchester's knights. Really close game, man. <laughs> really close. I have to lean towards Russia here with all the things that matter, right? The archer numbers, the sieves, and the knight timings. But, I mean, it's there's slight differences in this. Nice micro here from Goku. Oh, dark. Losing more archers, being harassed by Miguel. Really awkward situation for Dark. Goku's really impressed me today. He's really impressed me. Like, there's a lot of players in our scene, guys, who've been around for, like, 10 plus years and became less active at a certain point. And, um... They're always really solid. But, you know, if you don't see him playing 1v1s a lot, you do wonder, like, okay, maybe they're just chilling now. Maybe they're not really competing as much. But usually, Brazil has that. They have a lot of those players who, when it comes time to play for their country, can step it up. But Goku's looked really good, dude. I thought he was just kind of casually playing team games every now and then for fun. Maybe he is. But he's certainly beast moding it under pressure right now. Game 5. Population really similar right now. Wide's gonna... Jump in here for a couple of vil kills. Fire says stay. Stay here. I don't know if that's worth it for fire. He does lose a couple of villagers there, but killing army is the key. Ballistics won't be in yet for fire. Ballistics will be in for wide. Big army on the front here from Goku on the gold from Dark. Dark doesn't see it. It's Ethiopians. He's going to get pushed off of gold. By the way, no stone for Goku, so he can't actually tower... But the fact that he's gone forward is so huge here. He's on the wood and he's on the gold. So Dark has to deal with this. Meanwhile, we got knights. We have crossbows all headed over towards fire. Fire doesn't have ballistics yet, so he could die to wide. So Goku has to take good engagements here for Brazil. And then fire has to try and hold. And Miguel is here! Miguel is here with support. He's got plus two armor already. He is forging. He's got crazy numbers. And Brazil pushing right back. Brazil going for the reverse sweep. Meanwhile, Goku is winning this fight over here. That's huge. And they're still behind economically, but they've just taken some crazy fights. Fire's going to lose more vills there if he's not careful. Only 14 crossbows for dark. You've got 14 crossbows for wide. And the night number for Vinchester is pretty even to Miguel, but well played here from Fire and Goku on the flanks. And Miguel just came in to save Fire at the perfect time there. Right when it was looking tough for him. And good luck out microing Ethiopian crossbows. And it, the issue for Dark is his wood is harassed. His gold is harassed. How is he supposed to make army if he can't collect the resources? And everywhere he looks, there's a new force. And Vinchester can't necessarily come save him either because Miguel's coming. And Fire's coming as well to hit Vinchester, which Vinchester isn't prepared for. So Brazil is, they're just kind of everywhere right now. And the one thing you can't do when up against Brazil is you can't let Miguel cook. Because when Miguel gets cooking with a good calf sieve, he could beat the best of the best. And that's precisely what Miguel's been doing. Like, he's been completely untouched this game. Two TCs. And it's just like the previous game. The guy is so smooth in these conditions. Love this teamwork to come over here to hit Vinchester. Because Wide wasn't expecting that. Wide was at home. And then Goku even sneaking these crossbows. Fire uh, Vinchester trying to find them right now. Russia was up 2-0. Brazil's best player, Dogao, is on vacation. 
They probably were thinking they could lose the first round and get through in the loser's bracket, but this performance is crazy. All three from Brazil are here on Vinchester, knocking on the door. Miguel slicing and dicing the Knights, slicing and dicing the Vils. Looking for a way out, even, which he'll find. These crossbows get found as well. I think there's a way out. I think he could escape. I mean, he could break through the palisade. The crossbows could help as well. Look at all this army here. Like, Fire and Goku could just break in as well. Miguel's got more knights. The, more, the knights are streaming in underneath the TC from Vinchester. And it's just nonstop here for Miguel. He's got the third TC coming up. He's got three stables producing nonstop. And poor Vinchester's got armies everywhere now. All of his wood lines are surrounded by crossbows. He's got knights underneath his TCs. And Vinchester, the best player for Team Russia, just can't do anything now either. And there's you have no choice if you're wide. You have to come save Vinch. You can't go counterattack now, which means fire can do his thing, catch up economically. Look at all the kills Fire's found here on both sides. Goku's in here as well. Crazy. Population still really close because Russia still have an eco lead. That's what's crazy. Look at the vil difference between wide and between Fire. But Fire's got 58 crossbows. <laughs> Fire, Fire has so many crossbows, man. Goku doesn't have that many. Fire does. Holy. Maybe their way back, if there is a way back for Team Russia, would be wide clicking up to Imp. Fire loses this mass of crossbows. Oh, no. But now Goku and Miguel are going to be through again into Vinchester's base. Vinch can't stop that, man. Wide. Can't he do it alone? Can Dark do this? Like, can Dark bring it back? Dark does have a lot of crossbows himself. They're all kind of split up in different areas. They certainly have a timing here, Russia, to maybe turn this around. Wide could wipe out two players with Arbalest. Uh, but Miguel still has so many knights. The numbers are so high. Vinchester's knight number is actually not too bad for a guy who's at 47 bills. The fire did lose everything here. Guys, I think this gets interesting. I do not think this is over. Fire's only at 25 crossbows. Dark is it? Dark has outboomed Goku. So Dark has superior eco. He has similar crossbow numbers. Army count is, is even. Eco count is dead even. How have we arrived at this point? It is 275 populations for both teams. And watch the score flip. Oh, man. Fire's got to be active here with his crossbows. He's got to get in here. They have to continue to triple. That's That was what was working for them. Is all the Brazilians were together here. And Dark is going to fall back. Take losses. But here goes wide. Can he do this? Bracer alone. Like, it is such a big difference. I don't have confidence Fire can defend from that. Dark is also kind of having problems. <laughs> so, I mean... But Dark is... Look at how many ranges he has. He could maybe recover? It depends on if he takes eco losses. Oh, man. Why is going the wrong way? If he went this way, it'd be so much stronger. You could see Fire was really worried about that. The fire actually has house walls kind of everywhere on this side. Dark is getting slaughtered. And this is giving Brazil time. Miguel's got 100 vils. Miguel's about to click imp. They just need to stall for Miguel right now. If Miguel can get to a position to save the team, it would be in like three minutes. Oh no, there's a hole. There's a hole. Oh no, fire. But he did get guard tower. And it's enough to stop this army. Like, this army genuinely just went the wrong way. If it went this way, it could get to Miguel's base at least. But this is giving Brazil so much time. You could tell he was hesitant because he saw the tower. And now Fire actually has another tower. This is best case scenario for Fire. 
considering the circumstances. It's still not great, but look what they're doing over here. Oh man, there's more army over here from Goku. I don't understand how Dark is still at 80 villagers. And so what could have been 40 Arbalest on top of Miguel's face, right when he clicked him, ends up being like 29 weak Arbalest hitting Miguel right when he's halfway to Imp, which gives them time. I don't know, guys. Vinch has 28 knights. Vinch has crazy knight numbers. And if Vinch were to just go to Miguel right now, or I guess if Vinch comes in right now, I think they clear this. And Vinch can recover economically. Dark has done an impressive job maintaining his archer mass. What a game. What a crazy game. I think Russia wins this game. Like, Brazil had all the army. They didn't have the eco. It all came at a cost. Fire hasn't clicked up yet to the Imperial Age. It doesn't look like he will click up to the Imperial Age. You have Goku on the way up, but Goku might lose his army. Dark is crazy consistent. Look at these crossbows. And then look at the Arbalest. The Arbalest are in Miguel's eco, and Miguel can't stop this. This TC's idle. These vills are idle. These vills are idle. These vills are idle. He's got like 40 idle villagers. Russia are going to win this game. What a game. What a comeback. Miguel's like... M Miguel and Goku are the key now. But Miguel is in a an awful position. And he only has 16 units to upgrade. And like, Wide has been so untouched that he'll always have more arbs, right? Like, his eco is, is flowing. Fire is... His eco's disaster. He's making castle age units here to come defend. The arbs are going to hit Goku. They're going to hit Miguel in the back. And I guess Goku's the key. It has to be Goku with the key. And now Goku's going to get hit. Oh, man. I mean, luckily he can afford his upgrades. But guys, there's just too much army around them right now. Let's see. Cavaliers in for Miguel. But there's a night buffer from Vinch. Still so many arbs. 70 arbalists for wide. So this is what I said about Russia, right? Like, Vinchester and Dark, they are known. Right? They're understood. People have seen them play for years. Wide and antagonist for Russia have gotten really good the last couple years. And the more they play with their teammates, the better they can coordinate. And Wide is, is kind of carried the team back into this one. Vinchester is on the way to Imp now too. Dark is on the way to Imp now too. This is the time for Brazil. This is where they have the tech advantage. They have the Ethiopian Arbs. They have Cavalier. Can they swing this back? Let's see. Fire's still in a rough spot. So it pretty much has to be Goku. It has to be Miguel. And Goku is dodging the shots because he knows that Wide is just going to accept the losses there. So he dodges a couple of the shots, and they actually get a clear. Not bad. Remember, Vinchester's still two minutes away from Imp. Dark is still two minutes away from Imp. So they could lose all that military, all the knights, and all of the uh, all the Arbalest. Dogal does have... Or, or sorry, not Dogal. Miguel does have a lot in queue. What a game. Brazil can turn this around over the next two minutes. They have to hit this. They have to hit Dark, or they have to hit Vinch. Vinch is prepping with a defensive castle. Dark is expecting this and falling back to his hill. Where will the army end up going? The army from Vinchester is just a distraction army. Miguel doesn't really want to have to kill that. What they want is they want any of the... Like, any other groups of armies, really. It seems to me... Ooh, interesting. Dark actually... He takes the hill... Because he wants his castle. Oh god, the timing! The timing! I think Dark is completely out of position if Miguel can get around him. The cliff! This is crazy! He needs to get around him. Use the cliff! If he gets on the other side of the cliff, all the crossbows could be stopped right before the upgrades. Miguel is around him. He's through him. Ah! This is the perfect find for Brazil! What on earth was this engagement? Dark is going to lose like every single crossbow, his castle gets denied. 
he just completely collapses right in the most important moment. If he sat in his base, he would have been better off than trying to protect the front of it. But oh man, Miguel's at 32 Cav. And we're still in a back and forth game. That, like, here's what's crazy, right? Fire's still not in a great spot, right? Wide is in a ridiculous spot. Vinchester's in a ridiculous spot. That attack right there saved Brazil. That that keeps Brazil in the game. They are still arguably behind. Because Vinchester's got 40 Frankish Cavalier. He can still get Paladin. I mean, crazy moments there. What in the world? Here come the Arbalest from Goku, though. Noticing that Brazil is starting to add trade, guys. Pretty early. I would have expected them to wait a little bit longer, but the gold is going to run dry. And they're able to think ahead, even despite everything else happening. Love this castle from Goku on the front. You could tell Dark must think he has Arbalest in Q. Still doesn't have that yet. This attack from Brazil on Vinchester is huge. Because Vinchester now cannot raid Miguel. He cannot raid Fire. He can't raid anywhere, really. Because he has to come deal with his ball. And... I thought this game was over when Brazil had the lead. Then I thought this game was over when Russia had the lead. And now, I should just go back and say this is a really good game. Paladin's on the way for Vinchester, but these Arbalest, dude. These Arbalest are a problem. Fire's just now getting imp upgrades. Maybe don't call it too soon. Well, yeah, sorry. Um, Fire's just now getting imp upgrades on his Arbalest. And it's a lot of Arbalest from wide. 50 arbs on his own. Vinch still tracking this right now. Well, I'll, we'll definitely kill this at some point. Goku might sit in the pond like an annoying guy, though. And Brazil find the clear. Or will come close to finding the clear on the army from wide in the middle. Now, Slavs can't get Paladin. So, this is where Slavs become quite awkward compared to Franks. And Vinch is going to have 38 Paladin. There's a big difference between Paladin and between Cavalier. The Slavs would pretty much have to go for Boyars, but you need castles for that. And Miguel is one on stone. So Miguel is stuck on Cavalier. The walling from wide is sick over here. That's really smart. And can they see this? <laughs> Goku knows... <laughs> That this army is going to be killed otherwise. So he's chilling right now on the pond. And Goku is pushing Dark. Who's up to 50 arbs again. But is up against Trebs and Rams right now. Yeah. Vinchester just signaled that and said, Dude, you got to deal with that yourself. Because I can't kill that with my paladins. All because of the choke point in the pond. He doesn't want to take the engagement. Oh, but here comes Vinch. Here comes Vinch on the other side. He can't kill the other arms, but he'll kill these arms. And then here comes Fire. Fire and Miguel both coming into the what will eventually be the trade route of Vinchester and team. Uh, how important is this castle, though, for Goku? That he can just still hold the hill. And he doesn't lose too much ground. I love what Miguel's trying to do. I think he's actually luring the Paladins towards the 37 Arbalest here, which is hilarious. Remember, he's severely out teched right now, Miguel. That's the issue. If it were the same sieves, it's a different situation. But that's one way to beat Paladin with Cavalier. Just lure the Paladin towards the Arbalest. What a great spot for Goku there. But guys, Paladin's Paladin. Paladin's so much easier than Boyar. Boyar, you need castles. And now the Paladin's going to run into the trade... And they can't stop that. I mean, they, they can, but they have to make more Cavalier than there are Paladin. How much gold is left on this map? We're reaching a really awkward stage when it comes to resources. There's not a lot of gold remaining on the map. So the trade is everything. The trade is right here for them. And Vinchester's going to see that. Vinchester could maybe kill that off. The Arbalest, though, into the corner now where the trade can't start for Russia. Or if it is starting, it's going to die. And then we got Cav from Miguel in the back. Look at him on these neutral golds. What a find with Light Cav. That's crazy. He is still taking losses, 
but I'm noticing that he, Miguel has units in queue and Vinchester does not. And still, there's no easy way for Dark. Well, this is a really good fight for him and a bad fight for Goku. There's no easy way for Dark to push this hill, it seems. I think there were Trebs from Dark a moment ago, and I think the Rams took it out. The Arbs are still such a problem back here, guys. Goku's done such a sick job. He will win this fight as well. Well, maybe not. But certainly good enough. But what a great job from Vinchester to still get Paladins in here. It is 480 population for both teams. It is game five. This is one of the best Arabia games I have seen in a very, very long time. One of the best team games I have seen in a very long time. Extremely competitive. This is why people are obsessed with team games on Arabia. And now Fire's gonna push? Of course he is. Because what else would make this game even crazier? Now Fire's gotta push. And he's gonna start to push down the ranges and the barracks from wide. As wide as like... He kind of has no army right now. He's got a bunch of skirms he's going to upgrade. That could be good against fire. Oh, man. I think this really just comes down to, as Vinch's paladins have killed 15 villagers here, 20, like 10 units here. I think it just really comes down to, can Vinchester make more paladins? Miguel is, is like raiding with light cav and making primarily light cav. If Vinch can afford more Paladins, then maybe Russia can do this without the trade setup. But if they can't make more Paladins, they can't deal with this, for example. They can't kill Miguel. Because it's completely fine for Miguel that he's got worse tech, essentially, right? I'm not seeing a lot of unit queue from Vinch. I don't think the setup's there. They're trying, but that's going to take time to pay off. And he's got 13 on gold. And I don't know if that 13 gold is going to be enough. Skirm defense for wide will not be enough if Miguel is here with Lightcap in front. Um, Arbalest, even like how many arms he has, like 70 Arbalest won't be enough for Dark if it's Siege Ram and Skirmisher. Because the Siege Rams can't be killed by the Arbs, and the Skirms just take care of everything else. What a play from Goku. All because Vinchester can't make Paladin anymore, he's then going to make Lightcap, and with Franks... It's not as good as the Slavs, and that could be a problem. But also, if they can take this late, if they can hold and get the trade up, and then they can still have that Paladin as an option later on, right? It's not like that ends. I just I keep looking at the trade counts. It is pretty even. But you got 30 trade for Goku, which I think is the key. Miguel needs to get his unique tech, and he needs to drop castles. If he can get onto Elite Boyar from, like, four or five castles, that's where this would start to change a little bit. But I think it stabilizes, because both teams are in such an awkward spot. I love the walls. Everyone should be doing that. Look at the full walls from Goku. Vinch just has Palisade walls along the front, but you can see Dark walled some of this as well. What a game, and it's game five. But... Advantage to Brazil right now, in my opinion. Even though the army counts are similar, it feels like Brazil has all the, the setup that they want here. To be able to defend their trade or break into the opponent's trade. I think Miguel needs to cancel some of his Cavalier and he needs to get the Hussar upgrade. Like if you have Hussar, you need to be on Hussar. As far as your tech is concerned. Interesting push here from Dark. I don't know, man. That Siege Ram, though. Is that going to take out that that trebuchet? Huh. Huh. There's another Ram here. That's still not ideal. And there's a castle there, too. Siege Rams against Archers is just sick. What a play from Goku. I mean, it's helping him win the fight as well. That's the other thing. Now, it's actually great micro from Dark because he's focus firing down. But down goes the Treb. Down will go the Castle Foundation if he doesn't delete it. Fire. Treb down the gate. Cav and Arbs running into the trade route. Wide is desperately dropping a castle. Will the castle go up? Or will they be in the trade? Ah! 80%. The castle's denied. Crazy. Now, they're not in the trade yet. But Russia has to defend this, which means they can't look elsewhere. Meanwhile, Vinch 
is still helping against Goku on this side. And he's back to having some calf. And you have to, to defend this if you're Russia. It allows some opportunities for Brazil to maybe hit some other areas. Like maybe start to treb down or take down these castles in the middle. I'm okay with just simply forcing the engagement and just continuing to take this fight next to this castle though. You are just one step removed from killing the trade and winning the game. So this is fine. And I don't know if there's enough paladins here, guys. I'm seeing a lot of cav for Miguel. I don't know if there's enough paladins for Vinch. If there's not enough paladins from Vinchester, then all the skirms for wide will go down. Here, we still have the Siege Ram, Skirm, Arb Mix holding for Goku. Here, Russia hold as well. <laughs> Russia actually holds. What's happening? Again, I cannot stress it enough. If you have Hussar and you have gold units in queue, you need to have the Hussar upgrade right now if you're Miguel. For all we know, it is queued up in a building somewhere. But he really needs to get that. Russia have held this, guys. They've actually held. Because Vinch is getting enough gold for Paladins. Like, okay, now we have Detonitz coming in for Miguel. He's going to try and make a switch into Elite Boyar. But that takes the Elite Boyar tech and still a lot more castles. And Frank, Paladins, they produce out of stables and they produce faster. So it's like way easier to get Paladins on the field. Or Boyar is good enough. Like also, maybe a little bit of an overboom for Miguel. He only has 30 army, but it gets really tough to get the, the values right when you're adding trade. And there's the chivalry tech. So again, the paladins will produce even faster now for Vinch. The dark could actually afford to lose some villagers here because he's also, you know, at a bit of a high population. I don't think you need 100 vills at this stage. And you've got 45 trade cards. Great wall technology coming in to make the walls even stronger as China have held. Crazy. And they will continue to hold. Why did I say China? There's Chinese. Sorry, Russia. You know what I meant. I meant the Chinese player held. China is playing tomorrow. So it's 3v3, right? A possible population of 600. And both teams are about to peak at 600 total population at the same time. Every player is in the game. Every player is in a pretty good spot. No player is having any massive struggles. This is insane. This is absolute insanity. And I, I just continue to think, you know, the big difference is Paladin. 50 Paladin. 50, 192 HP Paladins. What Dark has really struggled with and what he needs to prioritize now, it's like they can clear up Goku and his siege, but they never have siege of their own. They really need to have that because right now, it's really tough for Miguel to kill the siege like Vinchester is able to do. So I love the fortifications from Brazil. Look at these castles. Boom, castle, castle, castles everywhere. He's definitely there. Elite Boyar just finished. I think he is also signaling and he's telling his teammates to add gates. Yeah, see? Yeah, he's telling them to add gates so his units path properly. I'm still interested to see how this goes because there, it takes a long time to get to a lot of Boyars. And when Miguel has 40 or 50 units in queue that aren't Boyars, and he's already pop-capped, it may take a while until we see the numbers that he wants here. 150 HP, very tanky in the melee on melee fights. Boyars aren't necessarily great if there's Halbs and Arbalest in the mix, though. And Russia's starting to push. Because there's Paladin. Russia are starting to push. It is actually happening. They have Trebs. And Vinch has 40 trade cards, guys. This is crazy. We've got Bombard Towers here for fire. He will definitely lose this castle. There's no way they get to these Trebs right now. But the Boyars are coming out. Miguel's up to 12. What is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... He's going to add a 6th. He might need need a 7th and an 8th. He's getting the numbers up. He's got 16 Boyars now. Siege Onager? Is that Siege Onager now from Goku? 
What a sick performance from Goku today. My god. I know they didn't have Dogal, but Goku has been an animal today. He played amazing on Coastal Forest, and he's played incredible here. Like, how many times has Goku been on his own here? It has been all Fire and Miguel in the middle and in the north, and Goku's just been cooking up a storm against Dark each and every time. He had some problems, too. Dark has a, a numbers issue, and it's it's an issue now for Russia that Vinchester has been called over here. There's Siege Onager. Let's see if the Siege Onagers get a hit! That's worth it already. You clear out the Paladins, and then one Siege Onager shot on the rest of this with Torsen Engines, and say goodnight, Russia. Say goodnight. Sick play from Goku. And now, the... You know, the Paladins that were over here had to go to the other side, and now the Boyar numbers are up. And Brazil are pushing again. That's crazy that we're seeing Siege Onager in a 1v1 Arabia game. Military count is higher for Brazil. Has it reached the point where the military count is superior, guys? What do you think? I think you'd be a fool if you said no. Chad is saying 1v1 now, so maybe I misspoke. I've done a lot of that today. <laughs> I don't know what I misspoke with. It sounded perfect in my brain. But we got an army running through. I'm going with the team that has Siege Onagers and Boyars. It's no longer just Paladin that can win you the game if you're Russia. They can't push because they run into castles or walls or bombard towers everywhere from Brazil. And Russia's losing ground on both sides. Now, they are at 200 population each. But it's where is that population and what is that population that becomes a talking point now. We're going to have an eagle switch from Dark. I mean, they need to change something. If this was a 1v1, eagles is the best play for the Mayan player. Because you can't be going archers against Siege Onager. But Eagles are horrible against Boyars. Well, still could be a problem against Siege Onagers, in all honesty. This is this is interesting. Russia is going to use these buildings to buy time as they try and break fire here. And there is no wall here! Fire, you can't let Paladins into the eco, dude. I actually think Vinch running in would be the best play. Just get straight back into the trade. Well, Fire's got some towers. That might not be enough. Fire's still pushing. El Dorado needs to come in. Elite Eagle needs to come in for Dark. And still progress being made for Goku. It's now 50 Boyars for Miguel. 50 Boyars! And the Paladins will run through. I think that's a big mistake for Brazil. If they lose this game, we'll look back to that moment. That's, at the very least, a massive distraction. But there is army to track it. There are some towers too. And now the Arbalest from wide are completely unprotected. And they'll go down. Fire is still pushing here. He's three towers away from being in the trade with all of this. Russia has to stop that. And then Russia has to stop this. And oh no, Dark! Be careful! Oh my god! <laughs> the perfect shot from Goku flattens the Arbalest. And if pop space was an issue before, he's got the pop space now. Holy. The Paladins come in to try and put an end to this, but Goku's ready with the Siege Onagers again and splat. Can he do it again? Oh, these aren't even Elite Eagles. They're going to go down to the Arbs. I think the Paladins from Vinchester are doing a little bit, but not enough because Fire and Miguel are about to finish this and complete the reverse sweep. They will be in the trade. You cannot stop bo this many Boyars in your trade. Who even cares about taking out the castle at this point? You just go in there into the trade and say good luck. Vinch is trying to snipe the Trebs. He does take out the Siege. But they've just lost so much momentum here. He still doesn't have Elite Eagle Warrior. These are just regular Eagles with 95 HP. And it actually, he kind of defended from it, crazily enough. What a game. 
The Boyars also they didn't all get killed off. Hmm. Okay. Fire lost his siege. He did fortify this up with Bombard Towers, though. And the idea is you basically gain... You basically gain ground. And when you gain ground, you just bring the siege into that position again, and there's no, no problems there, right? You gain ground, you fortify the grounds, and then you just come back with more. And... Oh, God! Oh, God! One shot could just end half your army's lives. I think I even saw Elite Shotel in the mix from Goku. This guy's going for everything he can. Yep, and good luck pushing into Bombard Towers. Oh, crap. We got Siege Rams? Well, that could do it. Siege Rams could do it. My game is lagging right now. There's so much happening. These Siege Onagers are just hoping and praying to get another splat like that. Oh, God! Dark, get out of here, bro! Get out of here! Wait, he just deleted his blacksmith. Oh, he completed the upgrade. Ah! This is just horrible. Not a good spot to be in. He does split. This is a micro scenario now. There's a split. There's a splat. I think the castle still goes down. Here we got Russia pushing back! Russia pushing back with Paladins and Orbalists and Siege Ram. They're still not done. Crazy stuff. But Goku is grinding down Dark on this side. And now they're going to be in this side of the trade. And this is just Miguel switching sides, right? He's actually on both sides right now with, with tons of Boyars. Look at it. Look at this. Miguel's at 69 bills. So he deleted 50 some bills at some point. So he could free up the pop space. And now you're going to see the army count be significantly higher. And Miguel's going to be able to have 30 or 40 more Boyars than Vinchester can have Paladins. You combine that with the fact that I think the form of military was already stronger for Brazil. And this game, this crazy back and forth game that I thought was just over in early Castle Age, is probably going to be over. Maybe I shouldn't say it. Don't want to call it too early, you know? But that is a lot of exposed trade. That is a lot of Boyars. And what a satisfying game. Truly saving the best for last. This was sick. I just don't cast team game, high level team game tournament Arabia that much. Like, it just doesn't happen. It, as much as it used to. It used to be like all you'd see, right? And this was just a special game. In Dark's defense, I don't think if he got Elite Eagle Warrior, it would have changed a ton. Because he still doesn't have that upgrade. So that's going to be something that he's really kicking himself for. I, obviously, it definitely helps a lot. But I think they still ultimately have big problems in this game. Against what they're up against. Um, but, yeah. Still not having that tech is, is a little questionable. The fire... Holding down this side pretty nicely. What a great game from Fire, man. I mean, remember in Castle Age, he had all those crossbows. And then he did a great job coming back. I love the Bombard Tower choice. But Russia were 2-0 up. And they will lose this 3-2. Brazil getting the job done without their best player in the first round. Imagine what these guys can do if they bring Dogao in, right? Yo, Gal's one of the best team game players in the world, in my opinion. I'd actually put him in the top five. I think he'd be like fifth, but I don't know. Maybe we need to make a ranking at some point. Dark is dead. Barely holding on. Um, I mean, Wide is dead. Barely holding on. Russia is dead. Barely holding on. Someone says, who is their best player? Goku is right there. Dude, Goku needs to... There's going to be a conversation for Brazil, like who ends up like stepping aside when Dogal comes back. In my opinion, Goku needs to stay. Like if he can continue to play like this, I think I think Goku is their third, but it, it might be map dependent, right? It's amazing that you have so many solid choices. They even have Stark still, who's such a beastly player. 
just slowly creeping in here as fire with towers and castles. I mean, is there even trade remaining right now for Russia? Somehow there's still a hundred trade cards, but that's a third of their pop. A third of their population is trade carts. You can't fight back with that. And the GG's called. What a game. What a game and what a series. I mean, well played to Russia. I'm excited to see more from them. Uh, Russia will move on to the loser's bracket in that group. But that is what I'm talking about. That was a crazy series. Uh, very well played to both teams, but well played to, to Brazil there, who I think had, like, clearly had... The worst civilizations and a tough position from when wide hit imp to before Miguel had pal, uh, sorry, Boyar. Like that was a long stretch of time, right? Wide had, had damaged fire and damaged Miguel. And then really, I guess it was like Goku. Like Goku was just always there, dude. Always pushing back. Oh, you know what it was? You know what moment of the game was probably the downfall for Russia? There was a lot of things that happened here. I'm going to go back. I'm going to show you the moment of the game that I think killed them. Or they'll look back to that needed to be different. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Timings, 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 timings. I'm so... Oh, God, I'm ruining it. What time? Hit imp. 43 minutes. Okay. 43 minutes. Dark losing that army was critical. This moment in the game. Let's just go right before this. It's a 100 population lead right now for Russia. We're about to have Vinchester in Imp with 40 Cav against Miguel with 40 Cav. That's even. Fire has sick four army. Fire is out of the game, like straight up. Wide's in the game with lots of army. And then Dark has 68 crossbows. And then this. This find and kill was crazy. And what happened was Dark goes down the 12 army. If that army is saved, guys, if this castle's up a little bit earlier, if he's just able to click his upgrades and have 60 arbs right now, I think that Russia's completely fine. But this game started to really snowball back towards Brazilian's control, at least, after that engagement. There were a lot of different things to talk about. There was amazing play overall. But I think that was one of the, the biggest moments of the game. Siege Johninger splat was, of course, amazing, but you have to get some good control to get to Siege Johninger in the first place. So maybe just not good enough fights from dark and wide. I mean, they couldn't find an answer to Goku. Eventually couldn't find an answer to Miguel. Fire played super strong there. There's the economies for Brazil. You can see, like, the trade profit from Goku was the highest there out of anyone, on top of the KD being the highest. Uh, and yeah, great, great game, great series. Well played. So, um, what that means, because I know a lot of people are like, what is this event? I didn't know about this event until yesterday, blah, blah, blah. Just want to show um, kind of what the bracket looks like. This will show spoilers for the earlier series, for those that didn't see that. So, maybe look away for like just like 30 seconds. You could still listen. I, I just won't, sh you know, you might not want to look at it. Um, there's only four teams, uh, or sorry, four teams per group and two groups. So, earlier today, we saw this result. And that team moves into the upper final. And then the uh, there was a lower final as well. So in Russia's case, they will play the loser of Argentina and Finland. So honestly, could be either there because both those teams are stacked. And then Brazil will face the winner of Argentina and Finland. Now, I think the way it works is if you make it to the upper final, you're guaranteed to go into the quarters. Or am I wrong there? So I'm trying to think about this real quick. So you make it to the upper, right? Let's say you make it to the upper and you lose. Are you just straight up out? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. So if you lose, you do go to the quarter still. You end up being second in the group. So Brazil guarantees themselves the quarters. If they win the upper final they would go immediately to the semis and get a bye. That's what it is. So basically, going to the lower final is very bad because you lose one more time and you're out. So that format is a bit different than what I'm used to. So 